Uh, the parasympathetic branch overall, it's about to calm the body and conserve and maintain energy. And it lowers our heart rate, our heartbeat, our breathing rate, blood pressure, pretty much the opposite of what the sympathetic nervous system does. It helps us also to let go of mus muscle tension and relax, and it slows and deepens our breathing. So you can see here a side-by-side -side comparison of the two branches and how their uh, functioning in the body is, is opposite of each other, but they're both needed. So it's not like one is good and one is bad. It's not that parasympathetic is good and sympathetic is bad. We need access to both and we need to be able to flow in and out between the two as needed. So when we need to be able to digesting our food and resting and all that kind of stuff, we need to be able to do that. And then when we need to mobilize for action, for whatever reason, we need to be able to do that. And then we need to go back into parasympathetic when the threat is over. Because life is full of stress. We're always going to be needing to mobilize a stress response. So we need to go back, be able to move back and forth. And the problems arise when we get stuck in one. <coughs> Excuse me. Mostly when we get stuck in, par in, in sympathetic nervous system overload stress, and then if it gets way too high, our parasympathetic, the dorsal branch actually comes in and shuts it down, and we can have then high levels of sympathetic activation and high levels of parasympathetic activation, and that leads to a very complex set of health problems, and we go over that more in the Understanding Trauma webinar. Now, the, the, the main nerve and the parasympathetic nervous system is the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve, it, it, it's derived from the Latin word, um, means wandering in, in Latin. If you think about the word vagabond, a wanderer, same root as the vagus nerve. And so this starts in our brain and it winds through many of the important organ systems in our body. And it's the primary component of the autonomic nervous system. So when we talked about the two branches of the sympathetic the ventral vagal and the dorsal vagal, well, we're talking about two branches of this vagus nerve. Now, the old vagus, the dorsal vagus, that is carries all the way back from the reptilian era. era. Reptiles have that. If you think about um, lizards, salamanders, when they feel like they're under threat, what do they usually do? They freeze. And with their coloring and stuff, often it serves them well because they can uh, blend in with their surroundings. And also a lot of times birds of prey, um, they can't distinguish an object if it's not moving. So by that, that, that um, lizard or salamander freezing, that's a dorsal vagal response to threat in their nervous system that actually can, can give it a higher chance of surviving another day. Now the new vagus, that's only in mammals, and that's our, that leads to our social communication and self-soothing. It's what allows us to pick up on social cues and be able to talk with a voice that is, um, that is soothing to other people, not a deep, dark, ominous voice. It, it links to social communication, um, eye contact, feelings of being able to be relaxed and enjoy the company of others when they're close to you, all of that is, is, is vagus nerve. Now the vagus nerve, as I said, connects the brain and it wanders through many of the important um, organ systems of our body, including our digestive system. It connects to the heart, it goes through the liver, the pancreas, ears, tongue, um, and no other nerve in our body has such a broad and far reaching effect as the vagus nerve. And it controls such things as the throat muscles to help send food and air down to the right tube. It's responsible for speech muscle movement, like parts, ways our voice makes sound. It can lower blood pressure, um, controls digestion, um, and it can cause fainting when we're, when we're overstimulated. That freeze response I talked about, the freeze or collapse, that's also mediated by the vagus nerve. And what's really interesting about this nerve is it is sending information constantly up to our brain, letting us know how we are. It is sending signals up from all that, it goes through all these different organ systems, and it is 80% of its fibers are sending information back up to the brain. Only 20% of its fibers are sending instructions from the brain down into the body. It is constantly collecting data about how we're feeling, how our different organ systems are feeling, what's happening internally, and sending those, that information up to our brain. And it's really 
heavily influencing our perception of, of how we are and how we are in relation to the world around us. A lot of that is, is mediated by the vagus nerve. And again, it has an effect on lots of different organ systems through our body. Another one that's important I haven't mentioned yet is inflammation. Um, it's, it's really helps us suppress inflammation. And inflammation is a cause of so much illness in our body, chronic inflammation. Short-term acute inflammation is needed as a, as a way to protect when we have an injury. But long-term chronic inflammation leads to a lot of degeneration of our blood vessels. It leads to a lot of pain conditions. Um, it leads to dysfunctions among the different organ systems. And so the vagus nerve, actually, when it's healthy and strong enough, it can suppress inflammation as well. So we work with the vagus nerve, all of us are working with the vagus nerve. If you work with any sort of breath with your clients, whether it's pranayama, if you're a yoga teacher, or as a body worker, as you're, as, if you work with breath when you're working on someone's body, normal breath, we have an inhale and an exhale, and they're balanced with each other. We, we inhale for a few seconds, there's a little bit of a pause, and then we exhale for a few seconds and a little bit of a pause, and there's no emphasis on one side or the other. They're pretty balanced as this upper part here is showing. Now, if we wanna to start to activate somebody's sympathetic nervous system, we wanna to start to bring some charge, some energy.